Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon has its official runtime confirmed, and it's fair to say it's pretty surprising. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Rebel Moon. This is episode 12, and today we have a really exciting update regarding Rebel Moon Part 1. Zack Snyder is famously known for long movies, however his latest Netflix project is surprisingly shorter than his other films. Is this concerning, or does this actually make a lot of sense? So the official Netflix to Dumb page confirms that the official runtime for Rebel Moon Part 1 is 2 hours and 13 minutes. Now at first glance, that is worrying as it sounds like yet again a studio is limiting Snyder's creative control. Maybe the fact that Deborah Snyder Snyder confirmed that there will be a director's cut with close to an hour's worth of extra footage would give further evidence to that concern. With 45 minutes to an hour's worth of extra footage of every character and it not just being a few extra deleted scenes, you have to start wondering if Netflix is doing what Warner Brothers did to Snyder. However, there are two things to note. The first is that Snyder has a much better relationship with Netflix than he ever did with Warner Brothers. They are investing in his vision, not hiring a director to shoot a movie of an IP that the studio owns. This is Snyder's story that he has come up with and Netflix is just funding it as they believe in it. There wouldn't be planned spin-off shows and comics if they didn't, so for them to tamper with his vision wouldn't be in their best interest in any way. The other thing to note is that this is a two-part story. Part 1 and 2 were filmed back to back and will be released a few months apart. And Snyder said Netflix talked to him about their release strategy, and they agreed together that it was best for all parties involved to do two shorter movies telling this large story, rather than one really, really long movie. So the story is divided into two parts. So part one may be two hours, 13 minutes long, and the second part could be two hours, 30 minutes long. But together, they are one three hour, 45 minute long movie, which is a typical Snyder movie if he was allowed to release it the way he wants to. But because it is part one and two, he can expand each film's story slightly more. So part one's deleted scenes would make the movie around three hours long, which is a typical dimension director's cut. But that model doesn't work as well on Netflix, which Snyder knows and understands and is clearly fine with otherwise he wouldn't have agreed to create Rebel Moon with Netflix. So I think the runtime isn't anything to worry about when you really think about the context it is in. I'm actually quite happy to have part one be two hours and 15 minutes long as it makes me want to see more. Whilst I do believe a good movie can be any length of runtime, I do think for a part one movie introducing us to a brand new universe, this runtime could really benefit the flow of the story whilst keeping us wanting more for part two. Whereas if part one was three hours long for example, I think it could turn some of the general audience off from watching it. If a family are sitting down to watch a movie in the evening after work and school, a three hour movie would be off putting. Whereas releasing a 2 hour 15 minute space film is far more enticing to the average viewer. And then releasing a 3 hour director's cut that will also be rated R will be a reward to Snyder fans or fans in general who like watching director's cuts. But releasing the shorter, more Netflix appropriate version that Snyder clearly believes works for his story, I believe is the best decision they could have made. But are you happy about the runtime for Rebel Moon Part 1? Let me know in the comments below. We now move on to some cool character posters released for the film. I will just show them on screen whilst I talk about the next topic which is that Netflix Geeks Week will be returning on November 6th where we will have new reveals for Rebel Moon. I expect this will be a sneak peek at a scene from the movie. We've had a teaser and a full length trailer, so I think when we have around a month and a half left until the movie is released, that would be a good time to give fans a little taste of what a scene will be like. So maybe a minute long clip of one of the scenes from the movie. For some reason, I can just imagine the scene being where Cora is trying to get off Velt and is talking to Ray Porter's character and then we see 
see the mother world ship approaching, maybe ending with the explosion we see in the trailer, really showing the mix of simple dialogue and then the sci-fi epic moment. I could really see that scene being released at Netflix Geeked Week on November 6th. The final update today is that we have the official cover of the official novelization of Rebel Moon Part 1. The book comes out on December 26th, four days after the film is released, and it is available to pre-order on Amazon right now. I will definitely be getting my hands on this book, as it will give us even more information on this brand new universe. But will you be buying the official novelization of Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire? Let me know in the comments below. But that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I hope to see you here again soon. So until then, have a great day. Bye.